It's been a while I've been here preaching on a Wednesday, am I right? It's been a while, man. But the glory of God has been here. Appreciating all the messengers God has been using for us from one Wednesday to the other. I think we need to jam our hands together and appreciate God for them. Let's bless God for them. They've been so wonderful. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost has blessed us tremendously. Oh, bigly from one message to the other. Uh, it's good to allow other ministers to preach. Am I right? Glory be to God in the highest. Tonight, by the grace of God, we are still going on on our series, Exploring Supernatural Prosperity. Exploring Supernatural Prosperity. And ladies and gentlemen, God has been able to take us around this series. We've been able to look at the factors responsible for the generation of supernatural prosperity. And of course, we've been on the factor, you know, uh, of the fact that Prosperity is not of necessity something material. Prosperity is largely entrenched in virtues. <laughs> we have been considering the fact that prosperity is virtuous. Ladies and gentlemen, it is conveyed through virtues. Not necessarily, ladies and gentlemen, material in nature, divine prosperity. When you carry the virtue, the virtue, ladies and gentlemen, is a spiritual magnet that magnetizes to you the material equivalence even of the value of that virtue you carry. Am I talking to somebody here? And we have been looking at, of course, the Bible said in Luke, the scripture says in Luke, uh, 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 is it 16, 11 now? The Bible says, if you are unfaithful and unrighteous mammon, which are committing to your trust, the true riches. And we looked at the fact that unrighteous mammon is the least kind of money. That is material money, is the least kind of money anybody can ever have. Now, the true riches, ladies and gentlemen, are the true virtues of God. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, they are the real wet of God. They are the wet base of the Most High. When they are communicated to a man, ladies and gentlemen, prosperity answers to the man. I mean, dollars will follow the man. Ladies and gentlemen, real wet will follow the man. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. You are in the season for wet acquisition. And I prophesy over your life in the name of Jesus that wet on his two legs, they are running towards you. I see you grabbing wealth with your two hands. I see you embracing prosperity. In your life, I say demotion will never come close. I'm talking to somebody in your life. Prosperity is your daily experience. Every day of your life, it is from one level of glory in riches to another level. By the power of the Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus, come and shout it. I'm a prosperous man. In the name of Jesus. Are you catching what God is talking about? So we are looking at the fact that supernatural prosperity is virtuous. You see, ladies and gentlemen, God has virtues through which he passes this thing across. They are, they are called the true riches of God. If we're going to look at some of the true riches of God, we looked at the, the, the riches of faith. Am I right? We looked at, ladies and gentlemen, the riches of his mercies. Oh, come on, am I talking to God's people here? We looked at the riches of his glory. Am I right? Ladies and gentlemen, we look at the riches of his world. Am I right? And we've been looking at different dimensions of riches. Uh, we looked at the riches of his grace. <laughs> and then, ladies and gentlemen, we stopped on the riches of wisdom and knowledge. Am I right? They are the true riches of God. Now, the Bible says, if you are unrighteous, if you are unfaithful and unrighteous, mama, who will commit into your trust the true riches. These are the true riches of God. Now, the Bible used the word true riches because they are the correct riches. They are the true. They are not the false. The dollar you see, the naira you see, ladies and gentlemen, can be false because it can disappear. The Bible says, don't put your trust in here. The Bible says, you can develop wings and fly away. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter number 6 and verse 17, charge them that are rich in this world, not to be high-minded, not trusting on certain riches. It's so uncertain because he can develop wings and fly away. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? It says, the world does not endure for, uh, 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 for a thousand generations. It doesn't endure, you know, ladies and gentlemen, for many generations in several families. But you know one thing with, God, with, with, with us in God, when we have this generator even when the devil tries to destroy the material where the generator will regenerate it oh am i talking to somebody here so it doesn't matter what you take away from the anointed the anointing will supply it again i don't know who i'm talking to here whatever you have suffered as a devastation whatever you have suffered whatever the enemy took away from you in the name of jesus jesus is restoring those things back onto you right now 
I say everything the enemy took away from you by the anointing of God. Whatever has been a source of sorrow in your life, by the anointing of God, today the joy of the Lord will eradicate it completely. I say the supplies of God right now are abounding towards you on every side of life in the name of Jesus. Come and lift up your right hand and say, I'm fully restored. Shout it again, I'm mightily restored in the name of Jesus. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So the true riches of God, ladies and gentlemen, we looked at, we are talking on the riches of wisdom and knowledge now. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, they are the correct riches of God. Romans chapter number 11 and verse 33, the Bible made us to understand all the depth of both, <laughs> all the depth of the riches of both the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his ways and his paths, paths finding out all the depth of the riches of both the knowledge and the wisdom of God. Now, you, you know what God is talking about? The riches of God here. The Bible says the wisdom of God is true riches. Because it's responsible for where creation and where transfer. Am I talking to somebody here? The Bible said all oh, the depth of the wisdom. <laughs> and as I'm speaking in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the unbeatable wisdom of God is coming upon somebody now. The unbeatable depth of knowledge. I say it's coming upon somebody now. What it takes to arrest every ashness of the economy is released upon you right now. You sleep, you wake up, you just know how to go about it. Oh, I'm talking to somebody who's flying in your hands right now. It's called dollars. It's flying in your hands right now. It's called pounds. It's flying in your hands right now. It's called naira. I said landed properties are flying through you right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Are you catching what I'm talking about? The Bible says, hold the depth of the riches. Can you see it? So the riches of God are so deep. Ah, friends, it doesn't matter how far you have gone. Ladies and gentlemen, you've never touched the bottom. It's a bottomless depth of riches. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter how high you have gone. Ladies and gentlemen, God is saying there are still highs. To even, there are still highs. There are still highs to attain. I'm talking to somebody. Your level is changing right now. I'm talking to somebody. God is taking you higher right now. You have never gotten to your maximum. In actual fact, where you are right now is your minimum. I see you ascending in the name of Jesus and the maximum manifesting in the maximum mighty name of Jesus. By the power of God, somebody said something to me, the word hit me. He said, you can't be serving God even and be limited to the minimum. I prophesy over somebody today that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will not be hitting from the lower credits in life. By the power of God, you are ascending to the highest height. I see favor finding somebody. This is what a prophecy. The Lord said that somebody, a favor is locating you right now. Oh man, oh man, the two highs of favor are centering on your life. The two highs of favor are centering on your life. Uh, what they are not giving others will be given unto you. What others are finding difficult to acquire favor will get it for you. I prophesy in the name of Jesus much more than the rewards of labor. I said the dividends of favor shall accrue unto you. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, the riches of God are in wisdom. The riches of God are in knowledge. In Colossians chapter number 2 and verse number 3, the Bible talking about Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 2, 3, the Bible says in Christ Jesus is hid. Even the treasures of wisdom and wrath and knowledge. So you know what God is talking about? These are the treasures of God. These are the true riches of God. When you carry this thing, ladies and gentlemen, the material equivalence will naturally gravitate your direction, they will naturally follow you. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Come on, tell somebody hi here, man. Are you catching what I'm talking about? Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, we have been looking at this and we have been looking at wisdom. We looked at different sides of it. I, I think we need to please avail ourselves the opportunity of you know, all of this. I don't need to do a lot of recap when we you know, study this thing again and again. We have looked at it from different sides. We have looked at men who have worked in wisdom. And then we started looking at the sources of wisdom. Can you remember? And what was the first source of wisdom that I taught you? Can you say that, man? Can you review your books? Huh? Huh? <laughs> okay, no problem. I said the Bible, the word of God. No problem. You're right. <laughs> Today, by the grace of God, we are looking at another source of wisdom. And I call it association. What do I call it? Association, <laughs> association, association. Association is one of the critical sources of wisdom. And this, ladies and gentlemen, source of wisdom is something that can affect your life, that can change, ladies and gentlemen, even the dynamisms of what you carry. And ladies and gentlemen, can ultimately lift you into 
the best of God for your life. Now you must understand, ladies and gentlemen, that we are in the world of supernatural smartness and wisdom and knowledge, ladies and gentlemen, seems to take its place. Now this had been one of the prophetic uh, uh, power pointers in scriptures, uh, 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 relevant to our time, uh, as designed by God, ladies and gentlemen, for this generation. Now that is to say, ladies and gentlemen, if there is any virtue you must increase in, it is wisdom. If there is, ladies and gentlemen, any virtue you must acquire on a daily basis, it is knowledge. Because our time is meant, ladies and gentlemen, to survive by the increase of this. That is to say, until smartness divinely enters into a man, you may not be relevant in this generation. There are men that are in this present generation, but they are obsolete in this generation. You agree with me? They are obsolete in this generation. There are a lot of people don't understand what this generation entails. And therefore, they can't function in it. Many people, ladies and gentlemen, are still very much backward because, friends, they are not able in any capacity to operate in the dynamisms of this generation. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, it is wisdom and knowledge that makes you relevant in this generation and that projects you into supernatural world, even in this generation. This is a generation of increase of wisdom and a generation of increase of knowledge. In Daniel chapter number 12, Please project Daniel chapter number 12 and verse number 4. Daniel chapter 12 and verse number 4. The Bible said, oh Daniel, come on now. Seal up these words. It says, shut them up. Shut up these words and seal up the books. Can you see it? He said, of course, uh, uh, by reason of this, many are going to be running at a scatter. That means Kirakita. It's going to be everywhere. He said, but of course, seal it up until the end time. Because there shall be running up and down for many. He said, but you see, in the last days, there shall be increase of knowledge. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? He says, seal it up until the end of the time. Now, you understand that Daniel had what I call the revelation of the end times. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? If you read the book of Daniel and the book of Revelations, you will see a lot of similarities, most especially towards the end of the, the books of Daniel. Is somebody catch, I mean, the writings of Daniel. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Now, you will see a lot of revelations of the end time. And the Bible says, seal of this revelation is for the end time. You see, a lot, there will be a lot of running up and down. A lot of people will be engaged in struggles and kirakitas of life. Tiko Kintola. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. He said, but you see, that hand time is a time that is characterized with the increase of knowledge. That is to say, prevailing at that time. Pastor, it is not a function of struggle. It's a function of the weight of the wheat at work in you. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. It is a function of what I call your weak level. Your weak level determines your height of shining in this present generation. We are in the end times, you know that. This is, the, you see, it, as at the time Daniel was writing, ladies and gentlemen, there was nothing called electricity. There was nothing called microphone. There was nothing called light. There was nothing called loudspeaker. There was nothing called, you see, people in Canada watching right now, they couldn't watch in the days of Daniel. Ladies and gentlemen, people are, ladies and gentlemen, in, in England watching right now, they couldn't watch in the days of Daniel. In other nations of the earth, they're watching right now, they couldn't watch. And what I'm preaching right now, some people are still going to watch in the next 10 years. Because it's high up there on YouTube, it's there forever. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? You see, such, such technology has not been deployed. Now, you're under AC right now, the days of Daniel, and not, nothing about it. Do you understand? Now, the Bible says, in the last days, knowledge shall greatly increase. Can you see? The moment, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Faraday discovered electricity, come and see how development started. Computer started. This one started. I mean, see, everything is smart, smart. Everything is smart. In fact, we have smart chairs now. Eh? Even your clothes can be smart. Your shoes can be what? Can be smart. Smart wristwatches. Am I right? Are there not smart wristwatches? Very soon, I will be hitting smart food. Am I talking to somebody here? You will be having smart babies too now. Am, am I talking to somebody here? Uh, eh? One is responding already. Can you see now? The baby is responding. The pastor, you, you're talking. Smart, they are smart children now. <laughs> am I talking to somebody here? Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the world for smartness now. Your car can be so smart. Look at the kind of cars coming out now. A car, you don't even have to touch. Eh? Somebody was telling me in America, I said, you just sit down in his car. Just, you know, put the coordinate of where you are going. Okay, I'm going to this, this, this address. He said, at times you even forget only the, the steering and the car will take you there. Driving itself. Do you understand what I'm talking about? With so much of technology, whether there is light or not, regardless. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The car will take you to where you are going. 
You see, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, everything now has come to the point of smartness. The Bible says in the last days, smartness will increase. It will be the order of the day. So, not to be witty at this time is to be heart of generation. Huh. I'm talking to somebody here. Not to carry debt. Put your hands on your chest. Say, in the name of Jesus, I understand what God is saying. I am relevant to this generation by reason of the increase of wisdom and the increase of knowledge in my heart. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be relevant in this generation, you must be witty. That's the reason why you see a lot of sharp practices now. Do you know what they call sharp practices now? 419. 419 is not a robbery. It is wisdom that passes wisdom. Am I right? Is that what they, how they put it in Yoruba? Eh? 419. <laughs> they said it's not only. Am I right? You see some people say, come and invest. And I will give you 50% per second. And people, everybody wants to go and invest because of 50. And you don't think, where is this man getting 50% per second to give? Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? If you sit down and you ask yourself that question, it, you will learn wisdom. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. Then you will be careful not to go. Am I right? Because 50%, per, if you say 1%, one, 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 one percent per day or 1% per week, Okay, maybe he's still trading this, we can make it. But 50% in 24 hours, where will he get it? And the whole world rushes to go and invest. And then the man carries the money and runs away. And then they say, oh, uh, the man only had played them. He didn't have played in the first place. You see, this generation, ladies and gentlemen, is designed to be by wit. Relevance is by what? Now, that is in the negative sense. In the positive sense, ladies and gentlemen, your relevance and elevation are also tied to your weight. It is by divine design. In the end times, this is how it is. So if there is anything to go for, ladies and gentlemen, it is anything that can increase your bandwidth in wisdom and anything that can increase your transmission and your wavelength in knowledge. In so far as you can go for it, God is saying, I guarantee that you will shine like stars. You will do what? You will shine like stars. So that is exactly what God is saying at this particular time to my generation. And I want you and I, ladies and gentlemen, to be able to walk in this ultimate dimension of divine wisdom. In the last days, God said this is going to happen. How am I going to be relevant? And how will I stay relevant? Ladies and gentlemen, by association. Association is one of the cardinal ways by which these things are transferred. Ladies and gentlemen, except a man understands association and the law of association, there is no way you can be able to function effectively in the maximum blessing and benefits of God for your life. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, no man is a complete island wherein everything is present. Please understand. When the Bible says we are complete in Christ, a lot of times we are talking about the, the body of Christ as a whole. Do you understand what I'm talking about? We are complete in Christ. God is talking about the body of Christ as what? As a whole. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse 16, the Bible says, of course, the body being fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. Can you see? So there is no joint that is indispensable. There is no joint that, ladies and gentlemen, that is irrelevant in the body. So the whole body is functioning well because every part is producing its own. Look at it. The eyes can take you to where the food is. The hands can walk. The legs can move you there. The hands can cook. The hands can put it in the mouth. The man chews it. They send it to the belly. The belly will break it down. Digestion starts. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And then the intestine will extract everything that, cause, that is called nutrients and all that and of course defecation takes place and then the, the blood vessel will take you from there you know to, to, to the liver and then from there it distributed to all the parts of the body the heart pumps it every, so before you know what is happening please all the parts are relevant all the parts are bringing in their own for the entire structure to function so when you say I am a complete entity is somebody catch what I'm talking about it's because all the, this thing I can't say is complete by itself Oh, come on, I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about. This thing that I say, but I Paul say, a part of the body cannot say, I have no need of the other part. Is, is somebody catching what I'm talking about? That means it is joined together, compacted by that which every joint supplies. Come on, tell somebody, I need you, brother. Say, sister, I need you. We are connected together. 
So our association, ladies and gentlemen, brings some flows. Am I talking to somebody here? Our associations, interdependence, even in the body of Christ, we enhance supernatural flows that will cause, ladies and gentlemen, some dimensions of benefits and blessings to accrue to our side. Most especially when it comes to the realm of wisdom. Now let me let you know this, ladies and gentlemen, that every communication you have, every interaction you have does not leave you the same. I've always said this association, ladies and gentlemen, has a long way to impact you, whether negatively or positively. Every association, ladies and gentlemen, will impact you with something. It will not leave you the same. Association is an opportunity for acquisition. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, because at that time, your ears can hear. Your eyes can see. Am I right? And ladies and gentlemen, it can either be negative or it can be positive. Look at it, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible said Jesus was speaking in Mark chapter number 4, verse 24. Jesus speaking, Mark 4, 24. Jesus said, be careful what you hear. That is to say, ladies and gentlemen, just don't, just don't expose your hearing to anything. Now, you are hearing what I'm saying because you choose to associate with this ministry and you choose to be here. Now, please understand, there are some certain places where some certain people are shouting and, and screaming, and they are saying, you are crazy. They are saying all manner of vulgar things. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? You can be with some friends. that Everything they discuss, ladies and gentlemen, are things that will always discredit and will always devalue, ladies and gentlemen, the strength of your soul and the strength of your spirit. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? They will always say things to you that you will know that these things are vulgar. These things, ladies and gentlemen, are every day, you know, bringing you into corruption. Look at, you see, the Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 and verse 33. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33, the scripture says, evil communication corrupts good manner. <laughs> evil communication, the things they say. Look at the man by the name. Uh, 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 a lot, right? The scripture said, a lot went, you know, to Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, when Peter was reporting, the Bible says, he daily vexed his righteous soul. Can you see? He vexed. That to vex simply means he was provoked to compromise. You see, they said, we want the two visitors, the two angels that came to your house, want to sleep with them. You know what Lord said? He said, I will give you my, my daughter. See a compromise. He was provoked to comprise. He was provoked to accept their daily living, their daily pattern of living. He just knew that this is how these people live. They live rough. They live vulgar. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And he kept living there. Please understand. Yes, he was still righteous, but his righteous soul was vexed. He was provoked to compromise. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, that is by association. Do you know by association, he lost everything? <laughs> oh, I don't know what you understand what I'm talking about. By association, he lost everything. He lost everything. The Bible said the land was so big in Genesis 13 and verse 6 that he could not take the flocks of Ad Abraham and a lot. And there were conflicts between their herdsmen. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? The land could not even accommodate them anymore. I am prophesying over somebody here. A time is coming when no bank in Nigeria will be able to accommodate your wealth. Mark my word, I'm speaking, but they are not. Can you imagine a big gate saying he wants to put $100 billion in any bank? There is no bank in Nigeria that has the capacity for $100 billion. The highest bank that we know in Nigeria, I think at the time they said it's three trillion. They said the their spreadsheet is about three trillion naira. Now, $100 billion now? You're talking about over a hundred trillion naira. Which bank can take that in Nigeria? May I prophesy again? Big Gate is a person, not righteous. And you are the child of the living God. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Bank will lift up only hands and shout, please, we need help. Anytime you appear in the name of Jesus. Because the weight of your glory shall be bigger than their capacity. I said the weight of your weight shall be bigger than their ability. Receive this grace in the name of Jesus. Are you catching what I'm talking about? So the Bible says evil communication corrupts good manners. The man lost everything. Lot lost everything there. All the, all the flocks that the land could not, could not accommodate, he lost everything in Sodom. He lost his wife. He lost everything. You see, he only came out with his two daughters. Why? He went to where evil communication was taking place. He corrupts. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He destroyed. What corruption means to destroy do you understand what I'm talking about? And we must understand this, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus said, therefore, be careful what you hear. Because what you hear, your life will take after it. That's just the truth. Oh, yes. What you hear on daily basis will we, we form you. Information as a way of turning your life around. 
<laughs> information has a way of causing a transformation for you. Please understand, every transformation anybody has in life is a function of the information made available to the person. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So, please understand. Be careful what you hear. In Job chapter 34 and verse number 3, the Bible says, Job 34 and verse number 3, the Bible says, it says, it says, it says the hear tries words just as the mouth tastes food. Do you know that you just don't, if I say, Pastor, say take this uh, meat and heat. You just don't take it and you just swallow, boo -boo, and send it into your belly. Do you do that? You allow your taste board, which is, of course, embedded on your tongue to taste it first. Am I right? That is when you know that, ah, Pastor, this thing, Otikon, can eat it, Baje? Can eat it? No, I can't. You spit it out. Am I right? That means, by reason of the engagement of the taste board on your tongue, you can reject or you can accept. Am I right? Now, the Bible says, let your hear also try words like that. He said, you can, you see, it's not everything that you take in. Oh, my goodness. I believe I'm talking to somebody here. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? He says, so <laughs> let your ears try words. Job 34 verse 3. Because these things will form you and will make you. The same way, what you see as well. So largely it is what you see and what you hear. What you see as well will form you and will make you. That's the truth. 2 Corinthians chapter number 3 and verse number 18. The Bible says, we hold with an open face. Beholding as in a glass, even the glory of the Lord. Eh? are moved and transformed from this from glory to glory, even to the same image from glory to glory as by the spirit of god so what you see is what you become that's exactly how it is the bible said and uh, uh what's the name the man by the name what's his name jacob he peeled the stick and put it in front of the animals the animals began to give birth to plain skin am i right that he put spots in the stick and put it in front of the animals the animal began to give birth to what to spotted because your manner picture, you understand, your visual picture determines a lot of times your actual future, what you reproduce. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So be careful what you see, be careful what you hear. See, these things will form you, will determine what your life will be. An association is the Lord that transmits those things to you. If you have a wrong friend, that means people, if you surround yourself with right information, Ladies and gentlemen, your life gets changed. If you surround yourself with wrong information, ladies and gentlemen, life goes in that same direction. So if things are not working well, ladies and gentlemen, check out who and who you surround yourself with. And I'm talking to somebody here. If economically things are bad, ladies and gentlemen, go and check it. You don't have financial advisors. If, ladies and gentlemen, financially speaking, somebody is struggling, go and check it very well. At times, you are not taken to some certain instructions or you are not taken to some certain information that can change your life. Information is right. See, the distance between you and a billion dollars is just information. Oh, I'm talking to somebody here. <laughs> the distance between you and a thousand dollars, Pastor Tosin, is just information. Do you understand what I'm talking about? If I can just tell you, do it this way, won't you do it and make the money? Please understand, ladies and gentlemen. For instance, now, I know what to do eh, to make X, Y, Z happen. Then if I do it, will X, Y, Z not happen? It will happen because I know what to do. The other thing I'm talking about, information is what, that is why you see some people going for seminars, going for this, going for that. Why? Because they know that information is responsible for the heights they attain in life. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So be, be careful. Which information are you getting? Is it the one that is, ladies and gentlemen, desecrating, ladies and gentlemen, the values and of your capacity for homeward prosperity? Or is the information you are getting the type that enhances your chances of survival in life? God is speaking to somebody. What are you exposing yourself to? Because of time tonight, ladies and gentlemen, this is a big word that God is speaking to us. How do I expose myself? In Proverbs chapter number 13 and verse 20. Proverbs 13 verse 20. The Bible says, look at it. The Bible says, whoever walks with the wise shall be what? Shall be wise. And the company of fools shall be what? Shall be destroyed. So ladies and gentlemen, who are you working with? Who and who can you call your friends? Who are you? Can you call your companion? Who are you? Who and who are the people, ladies and gentlemen, that are guiding you? The people that are leading you. You can walk with some people and everything goes down. And you can walk with some people. And from the low hand that you have, ladies and gentlemen, you rise together. <laughs> the Bible says David was in the cave of Adullam. In 1 Samuel chapter number 22, the Bible says, 
certain men came unto him. And what are those men, ladies and gentlemen? They were men in the reverse of life. The scripture says that they were men that were despondent of life, hopeless. They were men that were indebted. They were men that were bankrupt. They were men, ladies and gentlemen, they were in grief and they were in sorrows. Go and look at it. First Samuel chapter 22 from verse 1. The Bible said they came, there was none, ladies and gentlemen, that was in any good condition at all. Ladies and their situation and their circumstances were, were bizarre. <laughs> Everything was bad. They came unto David. Now, the Bible said, and David in that situation and in that circumstance began to walk with these people. Because they took a walk with David, the Bible said those people arose in life unto mighty life. The Bible said they became the mighty men of David. They became men that were delivering territories. You mean the, if the, these people had this capacity in them and everything, ladies and gentlemen, and they could do it by themselves, would they be indebted? Would they be distressed? Would they be, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> depressed in life? Would they be oppressed? Would they, you know what I'm talking about? They were tired of living. That was why they came to, they came by themselves because I ate to sue one. And I to sue, and you now produce giant out of. There is a just by association. I prophesy over your life today that those that will bring out the greatness out of you will meet you. Those that will call out even the depth of grace out of you, you will continually walk with them in the name of Jesus. So whoever walks with the wise will become wise. That means you walk with this man called David. You know, the Bible said David was as wise as an angel. He was supernaturally smart. He knew how to go about it in life. How to escape, ladies and gentlemen, from despondency. The wisdom was at work in him. How to escape from indebtedness. The wisdom was at David will go and slaughter a city. Finish all of them and kill them so that nobody will leave that city to go and report. Can you imagine? Eh? I will carry all their food to go and eat. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen. You can just imagine the smart. He was living in the Philistine land. land and he was destroying the Philistines. And he was still living. And the Philistines did not know. That is a wisdom. You are living among the enemies and you are surviving and you are still prevailing and the enemies did not know you are hitting them to survive. I, I prophesy over your life today that wherever you find yourself, wisdom will never be found lacking. So how would those guys not be, not, not be mighty in life? Do you understand what I'm talking about? The, the, the might of those guys was not in terms of physical strength. Go and check it very well. I understood that those guys also had physical strength. But you know what? They, they were smart. It was the might of their mind. It was the might of what? Oh my goodness. Let me show you. Check that scripture for me. Locate it. It should be in First Peter, right? He said, equip yourself with this mindset. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He said, for he that has suffered in the flesh. He said, he said, he said, as um, he has, he has died to some, so, so, so. He said, equip yourself also with this mindset. Check that scripture for me. Now, you can remember, you can remember when Absalom chased David out of power. And that David left his friend there. And the friend was advising Absalom. He said, you know your father and his men. You know, of course, they called Aitofel. Give us the cancer. What should we do tonight? Aitofel said, let's descend. Let's chase after David. He must have been tired now. He must be hiding in a cave or somewhere. We'll go, and, we'll go and slaughter him. And all the men will flee from him. The cancer of Aitofel was a perfect cancer. Because the Bible says the cancer Aitofel gave was like a man inquiring from the, from the oracles of God. From the mouth of God himself. What God will say is what Aitofel will say over his situation. That's a, that's a spirit of cancer at work in the man. And whoever works with that kind of man will be wise. Remember, Aitofel was David's counselor. So you can understand how David was smart. He surrounded himself with smart people. I prophesy fools will not surround you. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So this guy gave Absalom a perfect cancer. And then friend, David's friend came and, and overturned it. He said, you No, know, David had prayed, Lord. He said, The only prayer David prayed, when, when the only prayer David prayed, when Absalom chased him away, you know that prayer? He said, Lord, turn to now to the counsel of Ahitophel. Because he knew that if this guy could be by Hasalom, David knew he was finished. Because the wisdom of this guy will overturn the entire territory of David. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Ah, may God give you good association for wisdom acquisition. Are you catching, are you catching what I'm talking about? And then the friend of David was there. We will soon finish tonight because I want us to pray. Definitely, I mean, I can't finish this message tonight. Uh, you know, we'll just, you know, stop around here. So, I mean, so that all of us can pray. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, the, the counsel, the, 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 the friend of David now said unto Absalom, he said, do not answer Absal uh, Ahitophel. He said, the counsel Ahitophel gave is not good at this time. That's how he put it. Please project. He said, it's not good at this time. He said, he said, he said look at it. He said, you know your father, David. 
He said himself and his men. He said they are chaff. They said they they are chaff in their minds. Can you see? So the strength of David is not something physical. Don't let me deceive you, ladies and gentlemen. When you get to heaven, don't be looking at, don't be looking for a seven footer man as David. No, I am very very sure David will be like five point something foot. He's not even six point something. Because you see, if he's tall and he's great and he's big. We will, we will ascribe the greatness of all his achievement to his gigantism and the glory will never go to God. You know, when people want to paint the picture of Samson, they paint a man that is like nine foot. Oh, Delilah, Samson, now, that is not the picture of Samson. No, Samson was a small man, very small like this. That is the best picture of Samson. A small man like this, that ha, everybody... He said, please show us the source of his strength. If he is a Goliath, nobody will ask show us the source of his strength. The body stature in itself communicates strength. <laughs> but he was a small man and doing mighty exploit. They said, look, there must be a reason why you cannot tell me this is ordinary. This small man, possibly a 5.1 foot man. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? How can this kind of man be doing this exploit? They said, show us the source of his strength. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Uh, the Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord descended upon him mightily. So, please understand, they knew that there is something extraordinary about this person. Ladies and gentlemen, there was something extraordinary about it. David. It's not the physical body. It's not the physical gigantism. David possibly was, in my own view, David is about 5.8 or 5.9 kind of footer person. I'm telling you the truth. That, was, that is my own view of David. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But you see, ladies and gentlemen, he had a mind. That is where his strength is. He said, for your father and his men. <laughs> Project that scripture, please. He said, they are chaff in their minds. He said, they fight like a, they fight like a, 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 a beer robbed of his corpse. <laughs> you know the me that? <laughs> if you are playing with hen in your house, they say, Go, and the hen will run. You know when you are coming, hen runs naturally. But if that hen eh, hashes his chicken, and you do like this, you think the hen will run? The hen will face you like this with all his feathers. So you have a ball. <laughs> you say me? Ah, you do small thing. Ah, the hen will say what? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? In so far as the chicken around the hen, the hen is ready to fight with the last 20 carries. Now, now imagine when you rob a beer of his corpse, of the little... So that, that, that beer will fight to the last... Do you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> I told you, I used to make this illustration. A hunter, I had this story, you know, from a hunter in Ocean Street. They saw, the, the hunter saw this, they saw a lion at night, night hunting. You know, they carry light on their head. And he saw, yeah, yeah, this is lion. You know what he did? He just removed, he knew that he was so experienced. Thank God for the wisdom of God that worked in that hunter. He just removed the, the light on his head. And because when animals, when they see that light at night, it catches them. So they will stay. They will be look glaring, uh, glazing at it. But what kind of light is this? Do you understand what I'm talking about? But you know, you can't see the person behind the light. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. So the man removed the light from his head and put it down. <laughs> so the animal was still looking at the light. And they cannot see the man behind the light. And the man just went behind and looked for a nearby tree and climbed it. And the man was still gazing at that light. The light has entered his eyes. The man now entered, climbed the tree, and shot the lion. Do you understand? Know the, and one thing with lion, forget it. With the last breath in the lion, the lion will fight. The moment the bullets enter the body of the lion, of course, the man did a good shot. You know what? The lion moves straight towards the light and the carry come by refire. Their own is refire. It's not touch light. Refire. Eh? And the lion destroyed that camera. Refire. Destroyed it completely and the lion had died. Now imagine if the man was there. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The lion, the two of them will visit her. <coughs> the two of them will get visa. I thought this word. Do you understand what I'm talking about? They will get what? Direct visa. No interview. <laughs> they will supply them immediately after this word. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking about? That means once, have you ever heard he said that he fights like a wounded lion? 
That is exactly how it is. He said David and his, and his men, they are chaff in their minds. That's where their strength is. It's not in their body. They fight like wounded lion. Ladies and gentlemen, David had that capacity. He was a small man. You know that. When he, he was not even qualified to go to battle. When he went to go and bring down Goliath. The issue is not with his height, not with his whatever. Even he wore the garment of Saul, he cannot wear it. It was too big for him. He had to remove it. He was a small man. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But you see, he had a mind that no harm, no soldier in Israel had. His mind was his battle, was his battle, was his victory point. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the mind that David communicated to all his, all his men and he became mighty. That was the mindset. That's why I believe so much that many of you will do greater exploits of faith in this church. I'm speaking by the anointing of God. Amen. By him that called me to service. The spirit of faith on me will so much rub on you that you'll be mighty men of faith. Amen. I say women in this house will be mighty women of faith. Men in this church have been mighty men of faith. If you are among them, come on, shout hallelujah. So we are about to start praying, ladies and gentlemen. What am I just trying to say? Ladies and gentlemen, association brought out the best out of them. David did not have to their stature, but he had to the wisdom that can, ladies and gentlemen, re revolutionize their mindset. He brought their mindset out of redundancy into maximum productivity. And friends, might came out of them. We are still celebrating those, those people today. The Bible said, look at it. You will know it is the mind. One of them saw a lion in a ditch. Bratosin, and he had a stick in his hand. Eh? A stick. And he entered into the ditch. The lion is already in the ditch. Oh, well, bad lion in the ditch. You did get lion over past you. Can you climb? That means you are done for. But his mindset is, what are you talking about? He jumped inside the you, oh, yeah. And he finished the lion there. One of them was fighting to defend his lettuce feed. Eh? And he fought against 800 men, slaughtered them to the point where his hand cleft to the sword. One, just one person, and will not turn back. See the mindset. Another one saw a giant carrying a sword, and he was carrying a stick, and he went to meet the giant to go and fight. Stick and sword? The Bible said, and with the stick, he collected the sword. It is the mindset. It is the what? Now the Bible said, a giant. Don't you know the meaning of giant? Two of them, David said, please, ah, I thirst for the waters of so, 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 so. And they went. And they fought, they fought through a garrison, a band of army. And they were fetching the water. After you fight them, you scare them off. And you were fetching the water. It takes time to fetch water. Eh? And you carry the water. And you were now coming with the water. And the water was not, the water must not spill down. Even when they brought it, David, David said, I can't drink this one. This is the blood of these people. Because he himself saw that. To, to press through a garrison, a garrison can be thousands of soldiers. Two people with their lives in their hand. This is their mindset that see, all things are possible. Let's go. Ah. Rest your feet. <laughs> Association is changing somebody's life tonight. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. We have not gone so far in this message, but the Holy Ghost has already blessed somebody. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Leo Pararo Satoya Gaba Zatra Hagza. Lempalaro Roste Zibro Digerokta Zatra Hagdo Senamentas. Mandra Caparage Pola Boste Zopreninge Dagda Zelacadis. Lenanato Zebro Nigerida Gabaraga Baglados Zebro Digerosta. Lempali Roste Zipra Ligarakte Zeketosta. Leo Paragado Zenentre di Gabo Praligarosta Zebro Diga. Lambala ragatog ze proni gadakte ze ke krodi baragata diboza. Lempali rodek zo ke proni garate ze proni garakta zo pradia. Lempala radokste ze proni geroka pargato ze proni geroste. Oh mambra ligorodo ze proni garaga baya. Lempali rodok ze ke proni gabara batok ze ke proni gabogza. Lempali rodek zeke pro liga bada zada tradi karosta. Whoever moves to the wife shall be wiser. Somebody pray, 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 pray. Paragato zakata. Pray paragato zempro nigerosta. The law of spiritual association, the law of physical association. Mambra legadosta, you are tapping into a law tonight. I say you are connected. Yeah, pradigadosta. You are connected to a law tonight. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Yambra legadosta. Memprani paraga. Palegadosta. 
Ragadoste, Mempa Ragados, the Broligadox, the Broligadosti, Mempa Ragadax, the Zadra Caburaga, Mempa Lebo, the Broligadosta, Zipra Ligadosta. Oh, Malabo Zembro Nigerosta, Mabro Lagarade, Zembro Magabate, Retox Zekebo, Zapra Nigedox Zetania, Lapra Nigeboza, Paragatagze, Lemparagata, the law of association. Somebody pray, 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 Member Babro Lege Boxa Zapro Lege Roxa, the law of association. Yamana Kate Zeke Boraga, Member Lebo Zapra Lege Roxa. Somebody who can right now tonight. Mapra Lega Bobra Lege Roxa Zapro Lege Roxa. La Paragada God in Leparia is linking you with the law. Ya Paragada is linking you with the law. Mapro Lege Boza Babra Paraga, Mampa Leboza, Mampra Lege Roxa Yeka Bobabra. Bound oppressed, Magababa, discouraged and disconnected from realities of life. They become mighty men by this law. Mama Mabo Zapro Paragato Zaprahaxa. Mempalibo Zepro Legadosta. Rate Zekato Yabra Digadosta. Ampalabo Zabradia, something is happening even to your heart tonight. I am hearing heart engineering work is taking place here tonight. Jesus, Yaparakata, somebody is becoming chaff in his mind. I said, somebody, Laparakata, that feebleness, my God, is giving way right now for divine strength. I said, that weakness, that infirmity is giving way for divine strength. Somebody tonight, you are getting connected. Maleto Zebrolek. Gadosa, the law of association. Mamprali Gadoxa, Lentalibo Zaprahaxa. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, have we prayed. In 1 Samuel chapter number 10. Now, everybody, please pay attention. I want this projected. 1 Samuel chapter number 10. 1 Samuel chapter number 10. And then Samuel, the Bible says he took a, a vial of oil and anointed. So starting from verse 1, he says, Is it not because God has chosen you to be captain over his people? When you leave this place, he told him three different places he's going to get up. And then you will meet some people in Sabaka of Rachel. And then you get to the, the plain of Tabua and so, 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 so. Now verse 5. He said you're going to get to, of course, uh, the hill of God. Of course, where you have the garrisons of the Philistines. He said there you will see, you will meet a company of prophets coming. With musical instrument prophesying. Now that is the enabler, the capacity with which they prophesy, the same will rest upon you. And you will prophesy with them. That is to say, the anointing of the environment will influence you. <laughs> your life will never be the same again when you are in that company. Now let me tell you this. You know, my new house, there's something I decided to do when we're you know, I was talking to, you know, one of my pastors recently. And I said, by the grace of God, I will just take my clothes and my shoes and move into that house. Ah. And the pastor looked at me, do you know what you're talking about? I said, yes. I said, practically everything in my hood house, I'm giving out. For those who are interested, come and take them. So, as we were talking, my pastor said, when she, you said all the way home, he said she was just thinking, and what manner of life is that? I said, see, if faith can build it, who told you that faith cannot fill it up? You know what happened? I just told Pardo, I said, Pardo, see, we are going to buy what will fill up the house. Ah, Pardo, say, okay, yeah. And I know how faith works. Oh, yeah, Pardo, say, let's go. He's here so that you can know I'm not telling a lie. Yes or no, Pardo, say? <clears throat> and we went to Hell G. I said, yes, I know that one. This LG is a sophisticated brand. So how much is this AC? They said, so, 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 thousand. That's fine. How much is this one? How much is that one? How much is this one? How much is washing machine? How much is this washing? I never had an automatic washing machine before, so I went for the automatic one. I didn't have a dishwasher before. I said, okay, dishwasher. How much are these fridges? How much is this double door or four door fridge? And they said, this one is the most expensive. I said, that's the one I want. Everywhere I pick the best. Because you see, if you don't have the money, it, you would do yourself a disservice to go and preach, to go and pick the, the lowest hand. 
Because the money for the lowest end, I did not have. The money for the best, I didn't have. Why wouldn't I go for the best? I don't know you what I'm talking about. So I picked the best all around. And when they gave me the bill, the man looked at me like this. The Oyibo man came out. All of them came out. I said, I'm of this freezer. They said, I said, so, so the kind of freezer I pick eh, is a freezer I've never seen since the day I was born. <laughs> I was, since the day I was born. When they took me up to that freezer, they had to take us inside to see that freezer. There's nobody who sees that freezer. Everybody said, ah! <laughs> I said, that's the word I want. <laughs> I said, that's the word. Now, you see, I said, that's the one. Now, after, I said, give us an invoice. Pastor said, yes or no? And they wrote the invoice. <laughs> Father, I have gone to take the step of faith. I slept and I woke up. I did not tell, talk to anybody. Heaven is my witness on what I tell you. Heaven is my witness on what I tell you. I did not tell anybody, come and help me. I need money to buy this. God is my witness. Only for me to get a call in the morning. Somebody said, hey, Pastor Femi, please, we need your account. And we need, we need that. And then I said, what happened? Ladies and gentlemen. And the person said, please, I'm sending somebody to you. Can you send Pastor Tosin, Tosin to me? I have this for you. I have that for you. Another man wants to send you money. Anyway, to cut a long story short, ladies and gentlemen, what, what we priced was in several millions. By the time these two people, just two people, that I did not, ladies, in fact, one of them I discussed with him last about maybe two years before then. I never spoke with him. Are you catching what I'm talking about? By the time the two of them responded, 18 million landed in my hand that cleared all the equipment I wanted to buy. Do you know what I'm talking about? I, I said, but I don't let's move. I know when I move, power moves. Now, you can't be in that kind of ministry and then you are saying that you are destitute of a shoe for crying out loud. And when you come into their midst, the same grace, the environmental anointing, the same will come upon you and you will prophesy with them. I wanted to begin to tap into the, into, into the spirit in this ministry. I wanted to tap into the oil in this environment. That, Father, my life can never be by the river bank and I'm thirsty. Somebody tap into it and power. Leo Paredos de Zekepoya Papra di Gerosta Lendele Bozi Pradigarate Keporagapaya. Somebody pray, 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 pray. By the law of association, Lord, I tap into the depth of grace in this ministry. I tap into the depth of the spirit of special faith in this ministry. Into the depth of the wisdom of God. How to go about it, knowing what to do, how to take the step. I tap into this dimension. Somebody begin to pray tonight. Hey, sakata. Breathe upon me. Yeah. Leo Parata Sata Yagaba. Breath of God. Yakabo Setelibo Sakataya. Hey. Leriada Sata Yagaba. Let the same breath rest on me tonight. Let the same breath rest on me. When you connect with this thing, ladies and gentlemen, it's yours forever. He keeps walking again and again and again and again on your days. Leo Parado Seto Yagabo Sata Yagaba. Hey. Lipara. To zembro ne kapara kata yagaba, leo parata zeketro de sopra ligerosta, ende reboso zeke de keboya, most high, I'm yielding to your spirit. All hands lifted. I feel the transmission of the Spirit of God all over this place. Jesus, I adore your holy Breathe upon me, bread of God. Read upon me, Spirit of the Lord, as I lift my hands and surrender to your 
And you drink of my blood. You have no part in me. You have no life in you. Because I am the way, the truth, and the life. That means you have no part in me at all. But when you take me, you become me. Listen, in Nigerian traditional wisdom, this is just what that you see, darkness is not original. He stole this thing from the church. In the traditional system, when a king is to be enthroned, you know what they do? They take out the heart of the former king. Do you notice that? They will take the heart of the former king that died. They cut the heart. They will go and they do what? They will go and smoke it and all that. When the new king is to come, they will give him the heart. Yeah, hit it. When he hits, he says, Kiloshe, Moje Oba. I hate the king. <laughs> if you say somebody Joba in Yoruba, which means you are enthroned as a king. That's the meaning. It simply means I hate the former king, Mojoba. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords say, this is my body. As you take it tonight, Ujobalale. Over finance, Ujoba. I say over health matters, Ujoba. I say over every bugging issue of life, Ujobaniale. 
by the power of the spirit of the living God over the economy of this nation. Oh, Jehovah, Allah. I say over your family, oh Jehovah, Allah. Over every human garden and every human collectivity where you find yourself in the power of the spirit. I say, oh Jehovah, Allah. Not a sotaya, Eliaga. Come and hit the King of Kings. And come on, ladies and gentlemen, consume the Lord of Lords. Take it in. He is life by name. Come on, take it in. Take in the life of God. Oh, this is by association. Is that those Lekebo Satayagaba Sopra there? This is the New Testament in my blood poured out for you. Except you drink it, you have no part in me. So as you take this right now, your home part in Jesus. Hey, Omwe Jobalale. I say Omwe Jobalale. I say Omwe Jobalale. Ladies and gentlemen, the superior takes the superior. The inferior takes the inferior. Witches take the blood of men. Am I right? But you are taking the blood of God himself. You are the super witch. I say you are the super witch. As you take this right now, every virtue in God runs in your life. From tonight, as a super dominion on every side of life. Drink it in the name of Jesus. Oh, lift up those hands in praise. Without a doubt, I know I have been revived when we shall live. Without a doubt, without a doubt, say, I know I've been transformed. I have been transformed when I shall live. This without a doubt, without a doubt. God bless you, put it together for Jesus and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Take your seat. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you are set for the mighty display of God's power. Ah, the miracles I saw within the last couple of days, they were terrific miracles. As in, the one I just shared about me buying things was in June, July. Oh, nobody's going to meet me. I spent, finished spending money. Oh. <laughs> it's a very good job talking about. It was in June, July when that breakthrough came then. And, but what I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I've been seeing miracles. And it is my desire to prophesy on your life tonight that the seed you are sowing is connecting you to a miracle your hand has never been able to touch before. Listen, except I'm not called. That is when this testimony is not erupting and somebody will not be sharing this testimony. And it's not only somebody, everybody under the sound of my voice. The kind of money your hand never reach. The kind of breakthrough your hand never touch. The kind of height you never attained in life. By reason of your seed tonight, now please understand, they bring for 30, 60, and 100 for you. You can sow and you, you get times three. You can sow and you get times two. You can sow and you get time started. That means it is in varying dimension. But I am catapulting by the prophetic. Ladies, please, there are some dimensions that are humanly impossible. Remember the man said, I want double of your spirit. <laughs> the man entered into the prophetic. He said, if you see me when I'm going, I'm taken away from you. He said, it shall be so. That means in the prophetic, any fold is possible. Any fold is possible. I prophesy the fold you have never received before. I said, take it in the name of Jesus. Package it beautifully for Jesus. The account of the ministry has been projected. Tonight, the spirit of power and of special faith is in the house. I said, package it beautifully for Jesus. I said, God is telling me right now, somebody's leg has just been touched. I'm speaking right now. You're watching me online. I said, your miracle has just been received. If that is you, come and shout hallelujah. Somebody is like an interview. It's right in front of you. The Lord said, I shall tell you that in the name of Jesus, that spirit of grace right now has wrought that miracle on your behalf. A woman came to me today with pregnancy. The woman said, they tried, he said, three times when she appeared before me this year, I said, I see you pregnant. She cannot believe it because all her life, eh, I believe this woman should be about 40 something, all her life, the pregnancy has always failed. Never, no pregnancy. And said, three times, this man kept prophesying. And that is true. She came out, she come and said, I see you pregnant. 
And then she got, she now came today and said, I am five months pregnant. Ah, uh -uh. He said three times this year. I said, hey. He said, I'm five months pregnant now. He said, you prophesied. He said, and then you appeared to me in a dream. He said, why I didn't come is because you appeared when I was getting pregnant. When she got pregnant. He said, look, you are pregnant and he's a boy. He said, so, 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 so. I said, I appeared in a dream and I told her that. He said, so she said, I want to let this pregnancy go to the point where I will go and test the sex. The sex. And then she went. And they said, he's a boy. So he now came and met me. He said, you told me in a dream he's a boy. He's a boy. You told me I'll be pregnant. He said, I'm pregnant now. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I am telling somebody, I want to wear a body. I wear a body this time. Have you packaged it beautifully for Jesus? Give me an envelope. The spirit of power is in the house right now. Halakbara. it up and wave it in this power wave the offering in this power you are watching online make sure you are paying your time you are paying your face make sure you give god bless you in the name of jesus you want to give out your atm card go to our website www.tgccinternational.org you are seeing the giving icon there give there the lord bless you the lord bless you the lord bless you and you are to be god bless you as you do you are the glory of of power is in the house tonight. It's as though we should not close the service. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, please go home. Ladies and gentlemen, in the strength of the capacity of the spirit, go and do exploits. Don't keep it to yourself. Do something with it. Am I talking to somebody here? Lay hands on the sick tonight. Call those who are desperately sick. Those who, ladies and gentlemen, are in terrific and terrible corners of life. Call them tonight and tell them you are free. As you are saying it, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, many of you will pop in here on Sunday with testimonies. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are robed in power tonight. I say 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 you are robed in power tonight. You are robed in power tonight. The spirit of power is going with you. Your mindset is changed. The law of association has changed your lot forever. Never to be the same again. You are there, you partake of the spirit they carry. Go in the power of the spirit in the name of Jesus. Till I see you again. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the season of power. <laughs> Don't miss any service. <laughs> At the way the power will still move. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Bye. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For more information, prayers, and counseling, you can reach us on the following numbers. 080-33-706-938 and 080-2828-1839 or visit our website at www.dgccinternational.org and connect with us on our social media platforms facebook.com forward slash dgccintl instagram at DGCCINTL. On YouTube, search Divine Glory Christian Church. Our Twitter handle is at DGCCINTL. Stay blessed.